Victor was a high-speed input device used with the Leo 3 range of computers and was the result of at least seven years of research by J. Lyons and Company Limited and a leading computer manufacturer. It was used with great success by J. Lyons between 1964 and 1972 for reading numeric information. Information to be processed was recorded by clerks on documents in bar mark form. Areas known as soup bowls or trenches were pre-printed on the documents as a guide to marking. These marks were then sensed as they passed over the photoelectric cells in the reader. As the autolector ran at very high speed, it's necessary to look at the processes involved stage by stage. When all documents had been completed, they were loaded into sets and positioned against a pickup conveyor. This conveyor selected one document at a time and moved it along a series of alignment rollers. The documents passed a sensor, which stopped the machine in the event of a double feed. The forms were then passed over the reading cells on a large revolving drum. A vacuum pump, drawing air in through these suction holes, held documents smooth and in focus whilst being read. An image of the form was projected through two lenses onto the photoelectric cells below. These cells reacted to darkened light. When a dark image was detected in a certain area, it was recorded as a mark. As the documents were completed during the normal course of business, data preparation in the form of punched cards and paper tape was not necessary. Information from the autolector was fed direct to the computer and recorded onto magnetic tape. Running at maximum speed, the autolector read about 200 forms per minute and was capable of taking over the jobs of approximately 200 key punch operators. In operation, it was calculated that the number of machine errors by her was only one per million marks sensed. The data recorded onto magnetic tape was then validated by the computer and the accepted information rewritten onto a further magnetic tape. Rejected or doubtful information was printed on line printers and checked by clerks who submitted a further batch of forms until all were correct. At the end of each run, the console typewriter indicated the number of forms read, giving a breakdown of accepted and rejected documents. Another development at that time was the Zeronic printer and its combination with Autolector by J. Lyons was quite unique. This machine printed at high speed both the form outline and information simultaneously. The Zeronic printer used both xerography and electronic character generation to produce its printed output. Xerography is a process which on the photoconductive properties of the element selenium. In the absence of light, this element can retain an electric charge on its surface, but when illuminated, the charge is dissipated. In darkness, a revolving selenium drum received a positive charge. Next, the form outline and data were projected onto it. The form outline was projected from a negative, which moved to keep pace with the drum, through a lens to a set of mirrors down onto the drum. An image of the variable data was produced electronically through two cathode ray tubes and was projected via another set of lenses and a mirror down onto the drum. Here it coincided with the form outline. A latent image was therefore formed on the drum as an area of negative charge. This image was developed by spraying the drum with a toner mixture of carbon and thermoplastic particles. It adhered to the areas of negative charge, but was repelled by the areas of positive charge. As the drum rotated, it came into contact with paper fed continuously from a roll. The toner was transferred from the drum to the paper by means of a negative charge applied to the paper by a transfer grid. The image was rendered permanent in a heat fusing chamber where the thermoplastic particles were fused to the paper together with the carbon particles. Excess toner was wiped off and the process restarted. At normal speed, the printer produced an output of some 40 feet of print per minute. This represented a maximum computer output of 4,700 characters per second, or 2,880 lines per minute. 
printer also provided a choice of up to 32 different format lines from each set of negatives. During printing, duplicate negatives were used alternately. This meant that while one was being printed, the other was being positioned. As part of each day's run, the Xeronic printer produced the forms that were later the only one of its kind ever developed and was highly successful. Finally, the forms were cut to size by automatic guillotines, which were controlled by marks on the forms themselves. By 1969, J. Lyons had reviewed its computer hardware requirements, and in 1970, operation started on an IBM 36050. It was not possible to operate the system with Autolector or Xeronic. An IBM 1288 optical page reader was installed. The 1288 is more advanced than the Autolector and is able to read both handprint, OCRA font and Gothic characters as well as bar mark images as used on the Autolector. Forms are fed into the scanner chamber one after another. In the scanner chamber, a beam of light is done onto the form and moves around the outline of the characters in a spiral pattern. This spiral system may be seen on the cathode ray tube monitor on the back of the machine. The light beam moves with such speed that the 1288 can read 1,000 forms in about 20 minutes. The forms then move from the scanner into the output hoppers. As with Autolector, highly complex programs have been written by J. Lyons to control the 1288. Information from the 1288 is stored on magnetic disks. Up to 29 minutes of information can be recorded on one disk pack. The advantage of this system is that it takes only a fraction of a second to locate any piece of data. With magnetic tape, a linear search is necessary. Optical mark sensing machines have come a long way but in the future they will become still faster and more efficient, perhaps even to the point where all handwritten data may be read.